First of all, good morning, everyone. You're all very welcome to this very special day, and special day is in the lives of these young people. And we're delighted also to have His Grace, the Lord Archbishop, back with us once more. Just as we remain standing, a few announcements. Organizations meet as arranged this week, plus the Flower Guild on Wednesday night at 7.30 in the hall, and archery returning at 7 o'clock on Friday night. And next Sunday's services are at the usual time. We also welcome our new church wardens for the ensuing year, Bob McCammon, who I'm delighted to appoint as my church warden, and Edgar Carson, again elected as People's Church Warden. And we wish all our office bearers every blessing in the year that lies ahead. Now, as we share in the service of confirmation, you have the order of service sheet probably in your hands. And we begin with our opening hymn, number 295, Come Gracious Spirit. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we meet today to support and to pray for those who have been baptized and instructed in the Christian faith and who now intend in the presence of God and of this congregation to make the promises of their baptism their own. At the heart of confirmation service are two distinct yet related acts of confirming. First, the candidates will profess their faith in Christ, confirming their desire to serve God throughout their lives, to turn to Christ, and to renounce all evil. Then the Archbishop will lay his hands upon them, praying that God's Spirit will confirm, strengthen, and guide them as they strive each day of their lives to live up to the solemn commitment they will make today. It is our privilege and joy as the people of God to hear the candidates' response to God's call to renounce, to renew our own baptismal commitment to our Lord Jesus Christ. It will be our responsibility to encourage the newly confirmed in their discipleship so that the Christian family may be built up, recognizing the diverse gifts of all its members. 
And so on this Confirmation Day, let us pray in silence for them, so that increasing in the Holy Spirit more and more, they may experience God's wisdom and love forever. Let us affirm our trust in God's mercy and confess that we need forgiveness. Lord God, you created the world and made us in your own image. Forgive us when we turn away from you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord God, through your Son you overcame evil and death. Rescue us from slavery to sin. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord God, by your Spirit, you restore us to fellowship with you and with one another. Breathe your love and freedom into our lives. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you your sins, and keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. We now join together in the Gloria. <laughs> We stand the collect of confirmation. Heavenly Father, by water and the Holy Spirit you give your faithful people new life. Guide and strengthen us by that same Spirit, that we who are born again may serve you in faith and love, and grow into the full stature of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You please be seated for the epistle reading. is written in Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 to 10. A shoot shall come out from the stock of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. 
Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nation shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. Here endeth the epistle. We stand for the Holy Gospel. Hear the Gospel of our Saviour Christ according to St. John in the 15th chapter, beginning at verse 12. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants, because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command, love each other. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May all the words that I say to you be in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. If you please be seated. It was lovely to be here uh, in Mary Lorne with uh, a very smart looking group of young people who have obviously gone to some trouble. This morning I don't quite know what you were all thinking before you left the house today. You were probably first of all thinking, I wonder what the old boar is going to say <laughs> now before we are confirmed and you were maybe thinking about uh, what you were going to wear and um, how your journey in life has been so far now that you've come to this age where you're going to be asked to take some promises uh, on your own behalf that others took for you many, many years ago or quite a, quite a, a number of years ago. So you were all born, I suppose, what, around about 2010, that sort of time, 2011, maybe a bit before that. So that's when you were born, but do you know when you were invented? Do you know when you were invented? You were invented around the year 1949. Because in 1949, a word that had never really been used before in Ireland or in the United Kingdom or anywhere came across the Atlantic from America, and that word was teenager. Teenager, that's the first use of the word in Ireland and England is in the late 1940s. Because before that, as all your parents and grandparents would tell you, you didn't have this long process of growing up. You just woke up one day and you were a man after having been a boy. And in those days, all those years ago, that those people sitting behind you can remember, all those years ago, all the girls wanted to look like their mothers, and all the boys wanted to look like their fathers, and now all the mothers want to look like their daughters, <laughs> and all the fathers want to look like their sons, because they're frantically holding on to youth, and they can't let it go. But I know it seems probably a very, very long time to you, uh, but to the people sitting behind you, it was probably, it seems like yesterday that they looked down at you 
in the cot in the hospital or wherever and thought, what an angel you were. Now, they've probably revised their opinion on that over the intervening years, but nevertheless, it's not that long ago. And you will have noticed that as you've got older, that you've been given more responsibility, you've been given more choice. When you were very small, you had to eat what was put in front of you, you had to dress the way your parents decided you were to dress. And as you got a bit older, if you wanted to have cornflakes, then you could have cornflakes. If you wanted to have Cocoa Pops, you could have Cocoa Pops. Or if you didn't want to wear that particular dress, you could take it back and change it. And as you get older, all of these choices are put before you and you're given more and more responsibility to make them. Just as you are today, you're deciding to do something. And you're deciding to do it, as the service says, with your own mouth and from your own heart. Now, I don't know, and you don't know either, I suppose, what the future has in store for you. Um, and I hope it has wonderful things in store for you. But the one thing I do know is that it will have some good things and some bad things. That's life. That's the way it works out. There are tough times and there are good times. But I hope wherever you go, and you could end up at the other end of the world for all I know, or you could be very local or you could be not far away or wherever, but I hope that wherever you are, that when you see a place like this, where you see the sign of the cross, that you know that is your home. You know that is your home. And that the people there will make you feel at home. Because it is your father's house. And you have every right to be there. To go to meet with him. And to meet with God's people. And when each of you was a tiny baby, you were brought into a place like this and you were signed on your forehead with the sign of the cross. And although you can't see that sign anymore, it was made with water and it was washed off, it's indelible. It's there. Because on that day, God made you his own. And he will never look upon you as anything other than his own. You may choose from time to time to walk away from him, to ignore him, but he will never, ever forget you, and he will never, ever ignore you, and he'll be right there beside you. You will feel the weight of his hand from time to time, guiding you and directing you away from something or towards something. And it's worthwhile because it isn't very often, in fact, it's almost never, that we stand up in uh, God's house and make promises. Uh, so it's not a bad time to think, what are the important things to me? What is it I want to be? What is it I want to do? And maybe more importantly, what is it that God calls me to do? It may not be all that obvious to you now, and sometimes it's only obvious to us as we look back over our lives. But nevertheless, it's an important thing to think about. And as you grow a bit older, or in fact for your whole life, those people sitting behind you, they have had all sorts of concerns about you. And one of the big concerns that people have is who your friends will be. Who your friends will be. I remember when I was growing up, I had some lovely friends who just didn't look very lovely. And I used to say to them, don't be coming to the door, I'll meet you at the corner. And friends are there to do some things. They're there to encourage you. They're there sometimes to say to you, you know, that wasn't you. That just wasn't you, the way you spoke to that person or that thing that you did. You're better than that. And sometimes they also say, you know, if you're going to keep on like that, you're going to ruin your life. That's what friends are for. And Jesus said, I no longer call you servants, I call you my friends. I no longer call you servants, I call you my friends. And everything that the Father 
has told me, I have told you. There are no little cliques. There are no little holy huddles. There are no people who know more than others. God has one thing to give us. His son, Jesus Christ. And when we have him, we have everything. Everything that God has to give. It may take us our whole lives to understand what that means and to live into it. But nevertheless, that's the truth. And maybe the most important thing that was said in that short reading from the gospel was this. Remember, you did not choose me. I chose you. You did not choose me. I chose you. That it doesn't depend on how brilliant, how clever, how attractive, how popular, how perfect we are. God doesn't want 100% success. He simply wants, over time, 100% commitment that he's infinitely forgiving. When you were baptized, each of you was given a gift. You were made a child of God, a member of Christ, an inheritor of the kingdom of heaven. That's what it says in the Church of Ireland Catechism. That's what it is we believe. And that you are his forever unless you choose not to be. Because he only wants willing servants. He doesn't want people who are compelled or forced or pressed into his service. The other thing that's going to happen today that hasn't ever happened before is that you're going to receive the Holy Communion for the first time. And I always say this to people who are to be confirmed and to everybody in the church, that if you come to the communion rail expecting to receive only a little morsel of bread and a little sip of wine, then that is what you will receive. But if you come knowing that it is his table, that he is there, that he gives himself to us in a way that we will never understand, might not be able to say an articulate word about it all our lives, but we will know that we will kneel at his table. He is there in a very special way and that he gives himself to us. That what he experienced as pain and suffering, we taste as bread and wine. And in that way, he gives himself to us. And there's no greater gift, or no greater pleasure and joy that the church can do than to celebrate the Lord's Supper, to represent those final hours of his life, and then to live on the life of the ascended Lord. That's what it is we are doing and what it is we will do. Anyway, I'll stand up and I'll finish with a story. When my daughter was about a bit younger than you, probably, she decided she wanted to learn how to ski. And we all went off to... Uh, Eastern France, just on the border with Switzerland, to learn how to ski. And I can tell you that 53 years of age is a bad time to learn how to ski, because that's how old I was. Because the old centre of gravity has shifted very considerably. And anybody who's learning to ski, no matter how good they are, spends a fair bit of it on their back. And I spent an inordinate amount of time lying on my back. And it was made worse by little four-year-old French boys and girls skiing round me, saying, Allez, have you ever seen a little old old fool? And I got fed up, so I got into the car at hard and I drove to a little town called Annecy, just on the banks of Lake Geneva. And it's a, it has a little cathedral, which where a bishop and 
300 years ago, a very famous man called Francois de Sales wrote very well-known letters of spiritual comfort to people. And I wanted to go to find the little cathedral, which, which I did. I found it. And when I went into the cathedral, I noticed, it was just after Christmas, that the young people had obviously been doing something, some kind of art activity. Because there was a big banner all around the communion rail, the front of the church, and it said, Je suis le pain de vie. Je suis le pain de vie. I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. And maybe it was because I was hungry, which I was, or maybe it was because I was feeling sorry for myself, which I also was, but it had, and I've known that verse, I would have known it all my life from the 10th chapter of John's Gospel, but it kind of had a meaning that it didn't have before, and maybe hasn't really had since. That he offers himself to me in every way, in my prayers, in the scriptures, in the sacrament, in the fellowship of God's people, in church every week. He's there for me to gain strength from, to feed on, and as he is and will be for you throughout the long journey of your lives. Amen. So if the candidates would please stand. The candidates would please stand. You could have the order of service in your hand because I'm going to ask you some questions. Have you been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit? I'm going to ask you that one again. The clue is in the question. Have you been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit? I'm going to ask the boys that one again. Have you been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit? Terry Louise, are you ready with your own mouth and from your own heart to affirm your faith in Jesus Christ? Lydia, are you ready from your own mouth and your own heart to affirm your faith in Jesus Christ? Caitlin, are you ready from your own heart and your own mouth to affirm your faith in Jesus Christ? Lila, are you ready with your own heart and from your own mouth to affirm your faith in Jesus Christ? Ella, are you ready with your own mouth and from your own heart to affirm your faith in Jesus Christ? Reuben, are you ready with your own mouth and your own heart to affirm your faith in Jesus Christ? Ethan, are you ready with your own mouth and from your own heart to affirm your faith in Jesus Christ? Jaden, are you ready in your own heart and with your own mouth to affirm your faith in Jesus Christ. This is a question for all, uh, sorry, for the uh, rector. Uh, have these persons been carefully prepared in their understanding of the Christian faith? I believe they have. Candidates. In baptism, God calls us from darkness to his marvellous light. To follow Christ means dying to sin and rising to new life with him. Therefore, I ask, do you reject the devil and all proud rebellion against God? Do you renounce the deceit and corruption of evil? Do you repent of the sins that separate us from God and neighbor? Do you turn to Christ as Savior? Do you submit to Christ as Lord? Do you come to Christ the way, the truth, and the life? The question for the whole congregation. You have heard these, our brothers and sisters, respond to Christ. Will you support them in this calling? Do you believe and accept the Christian faith into which you are baptized? The congregation will please stand. Brothers and sisters, I ask you to profess together with these candidates the faith of the church. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? Do you believe and trust in God the Son? God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit? Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Almighty and ever living God, whose Son Jesus Christ was crucified and rose again to break the power of sin and death, we give you thanks and praise for the gift of your Holy Spirit, by whom your servants have been born again and made your children. Grant that in the power of the same Holy Spirit they may continue to grow in the knowledge and likeness of Christ. Increase in them your gracious gifts, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of right judgment and inward strength, the spirit of knowledge and godly living, and fill them, O Lord, with the spirit of reverence for you. Amen. So the congregation may be seated. Terry Louise. Confirm Terry Louise, O Lord, with your heavenly grace, that she may continue to be yours forever, and daily increase in the Holy Spirit more and more, till she comes to your eternal kingdom. Amen. Lydia. Confirm Lydia, O Lord, with your heavenly grace that she may continue to be yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more till she comes to your eternal kingdom. Amen. And this is Caitlin. Confirm Caitlin, O Lord, with your heavenly grace that she may continue to be yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more till she comes to your eternal kingdom. Amen. And this is Lila. Confirm Lila, O Lord, with your heavenly grace, that she may continue to be yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more, till she comes to your eternal kingdom. We have Ella. <clears throat> Confirm Ella, O Lord, with your heavenly grace, that she may continue to be yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more till she comes to your eternal kingdom. Amen. Now we have Jaden. <clears throat> Confirm Jaden, O Lord, with your heavenly grace, that he may continue to be yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more, till he comes to your eternal kingdom. And this is Ethan. Confirm Ethan, O Lord, with your heavenly grace, that he may continue to be yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more, till he comes to your eternal kingdom. This is Reuben. Confirm Reuben, O Lord, with your heavenly grace, that he may continue to be yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more, till he comes to your eternal kingdom. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray for your servants upon whom we have now led our hands after the example of the apostles, 
to assure them by this sign of your favour towards them. May your fatherly hand ever be over them. Let your Holy Spirit ever be with them. Lead them to know and obey your word and keep them in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The congregation will please stand. The commission is for all baptized people. Those who are baptized are called to worship and serve God. Therefore, I ask, will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? With the help of God, I will. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? With the help of God, I will. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? Will you seek and serve Christ in all people, loving your neighbour as yourself? With the help of God, I will. God has made us one in Christ. He has set his seal upon us, and as a pledge of what is to come, he has given the Spirit to dwell in our hearts. So the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. I join in our offertory hymn 597. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast. The Lord is here. The Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Father, almighty and ever-living God at all times and in all places, it is right to give you thanks and praise, because by water and the Holy Spirit you have made us a holy people in Jesus Christ our Lord, raised us to new life in him, and renewed in us the image of your glory. And so with all your people, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying. Blessed are you, Father, the creator and sustainer of all things. You made us in your own image. Male and female, you created us. Even when we turned away from you, you never ceased to care for us. But in your love and mercy, you freed us from the slavery of sin, giving your only begotten Son to become man and suffer death on the cross to redeem us. He made there the one complete and all-sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. He instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. And the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And if he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks to you, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we do as Christ your Son commanded. We remember his passion and death, we celebrate his resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Accept through him our great high priest, this is our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, grant by the power of the life-giving Spirit that we may be made one in your holy church and partakers of the body and blood of your Son, that he may dwell in us and we in him, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. For honour and glory are yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. Go near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Remember that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
God of mercy, by whose grace alone we are accepted and equipped for your service. Stir up in us the gifts of your Holy Spirit and make us worthy of our calling, that we may bring forth the fruit of the Spirit in love and joy and peace, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out from the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Now may the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. We come now to our closing hymn, after which there will be the opportunity for photographs with the candidates. <coughs> hymn 658, One More Step Along the World I Go. Mm -hmm. 